Hi everyone. So uh, I am Amit Kapila. I work at Enterprise DB. Today I am here to share my journey in Postgres, and I will also talk about how the other people can uh, start contributing to PostgreSQL, or how if they are already contributing, how they can improve their contributions in Postgres. Okay. So, the overall agenda uh, of this talk is like how I started with the Postgres community and then what motivates me to keep working on it. And then I will uh, talk on some topics like how anybody else can start contributions or uh, something on how to write good patches and then important coding guidelines. Although these are very big topics, but I will try to cover some uh, brief in some brief about these. And then I will also talk about the community feedback process, like uh, from the time when the patch is uh, posted on hackers, what is the overall feedback process uh, of the community. And then in the end, I will also present some of the case studies from my own experience, like how uh, the patch um, uh, patch feedback works in community. So back in 2010 or 11, like in my previous job, I was working on an in-house database uh, which was based on Postgres 8.3. I was assigned some of the tasks related to SQL enhancements and performance improvements. While doing some research on the net, I, I came across that uh, the Postgres uh, community exists and there are mailing lists on which similar topics are being discussed. And I uh, started following those lists and started uh, some initial discussions. As far as I can trace, like uh, my initial emails was related to making the snapshots cheaper in 2011. So, in the beginning, in the beginning, the main intention was uh, to interact with the Postgres community was to actually gain some more knowledge about the Postgres internals which can help me in my day job, like uh, whatever we were building uh, for our in-house uh, database. And then based on some of my uh, work, I have uh, proposed a paper on wall internals in 2012 in PGCon here itself, and it got accepted. Then uh, when I came here and I interacted with uh, very few senior, uh, with senior members of Postgres or the other hackers, and uh, discussed few ideas with them that actually motivated me more to get involved in this uh, community. So slowly I have started working on the performance patches uh, in the community. So uh, and then uh, basically from there on like started reviewing the other people patches in the similar areas on which I was working. So uh, slowly working with the community has improved my skills for writing the patches or reviewing other people's uh, patches. And then uh, I also started involving myself with design discussions of other uh, features or the other uh, patches, which has evolved my knowledge, overall knowledge of Postgres. And then from the beginning, I do also read PG SQL committers to keep myself updated with uh, what, what is the latest going on in Postgres. Although it is uh, very tough to be always uh, like keep following it because uh, there is a lot of work going on, but I'll try to keep myself updated as much as possible. So, 
what glues me most uh, with this Postgres community is like my involvement in various kind of works that uh, goes on in the community. That helps me to learn new things each day. Like uh, for each of the email you have to respond or each of the discussion you need to get involved, you have to study a lot of code and then think on it and then respond. This helps in improving the learning of uh, Postgres. So not only that, even if we just carefully read the emails of other hackers and try to understand everything, that in itself improves our knowledge to a good extent in Postgres. Over the years, doing the same things, I have uh, learned a lot about Postgres internals and then benchmarking by either doing the benchmarking of my own performance patches or uh, of the performance patches proposed by others. Meeting other hackers or the uh, other people of the Postgres community during conferences and discussing with them different ideas also is a, a good thing like which uh, enhances your knowledge and you know open up your mind for other things. So the continuous learning and improving my patches over the years has got me a commit bit last year uh, in 2018, the same time. I think broadly this is the process with everyone. Like basically some one has to spend a lot of time reading the Postgres code and modifying it. And basically reviewing the other people patches and while reviewing, we have to always keep an eye that if we can come up with a better idea to do the same thing, that, that itself is quite appreciated. But reviewing and writing the patches, which even finally didn't get committed, helps a lot uh, towards this line, like helping the person to build the committer grade scales because you know uh, more and more of Postgres. And then the other thing is like once the patch gets committed, actually this is after that the main responsibility of any issues or anything in that commit, uh, any problems is of the committer. However, if the original author also gets involved and fix the bugs in its commits, that is a very good sign and considered a uh, good thing in a community. I will share some example towards the end of the presentation for that. Not only me, uh, I think uh, Tomlin also has said uh, many of these things uh, on the mailing list many a times. So yeah, these are some of the important things which everyone has to practice uh, to improve uh, one's inclusion in the community and grow there. So this is how uh, I got evolved in the community and my participation in the community. Next I will start talking about like how anybody else can uh, start contributing in the community. Like what you need to know about the same. To start with actually one should be aware of all the community resources uh, which are available. For example, like oh, we have frequently asked question list by the new developers. I have provided the links for each of these things in the presentation, so later on you can try and see all these things. And then there are various kind of mailing lists for new users, for people who want to talk about performance or reporting the bugs. So you have to see which fits you most and you have to subscribe to those mailing lists and talk, talk over there. For the developers, actually PG SQL hackers is the most uh, must for source code developers. Apart from this, actually the blogs are there on uh, Postgres uh, site. You need to go through that, those also. And then there is an IRC channel over which also you can discuss the problems. So these are some of the resources uh, which one has to be aware to start working with the Postgres community.
So, some journal tips for uh, getting involved in the community are like you have to always ask questions on the relevant list. For example, if you have something related to source code, then it is better to ask on PG SQL hackers. Whereas, if you have some journal question about the usage of Postgres, like uh, whether to turn auto vacuum or some uh, GUC, something on those lines, you have to talk on the Postgres journal mailing list. And if your queries are running slow due to some reason, then there is a PG SQL performance list. So, the idea is if you get uh, send the mail on the right mailing list, there is a good chance that uh, you can get the feedback early. Then slowly if you start answering the questions of the other people with best of your knowledge, that also is good. Like you, it is difficult to say always that you, you will be always right. But if you can answer with best of your knowledge, that in itself is a good thing. And uh, then the other thing is you can, if you, uh, in the beginning you can start writing blogs about Postgres, whatever you have learned on that. So that also is one contribution towards Postgres. And then giving presentation on what you have learned in conferences, or you can help with translations and packaging stuff. So all these things uh, help to start contributing in Postgres. So I have normally heard from many people like what should be my first patch or first few patches. Like, where should I search for, like uh, where to write my first patch? Actually, there is no standard formula or anything where uh, we have a list which anybody can provide you to start working on. If it would have been, it, it, it would be much better, but we don't have. So, I think the best way to do that is that one should start reading PG SQL hackers and PG SQL bugs. Many a times, like uh, senior hackers or other hackers have some incomplete patch and they want others to uh, contribute to it and complete it. So this way, uh, one can start its contributions. And then the next thing could be like you can try start uh, by trying to fix the bugs which are reported on PG SQL bugs. And uh, then testing the latest features in the release and reporting the bugs if you encounter any to the mailing list is also a, a good contribution. And then uh, like while uh, studying the feature, if you see that the there is missing documentation or documentation is you are not able to understand and you have better way to express it, you can send the documentation patches. So that also is uh, way to contribute. And the, I think most important thing is during commit fest, we do the review of patches proposed by the various people. So this is the time like uh, where you can uh, start uh, the contribution. This is, this generally happens four or five times in a year. Last year it happened for five times. So, so and the other thing is like uh, similar to last, uh, what I have said in the last slide, like sometimes uh, like when the patch is bigger or the feature is bigger, people decide to divide into multiple patches and they push the first patch and then always one can have a chance to complete the remaining work. So this is another opportunity where one can uh, contribute. We have a to-do list, like uh, unfortunately that list is not the place where you can directly get the idea to work on, but I think it can give you some pointers on where to start or what is the re work where, remaining work which you can explore to do. But don't treat it as like a thing where you can find something to directly work on. So next thing is about uh, writing the patches. Like 
basically you can download the code and start understanding the patch creation process. There is a uh, site like uh, working with JIT, which can give you the basic instructions on how to work with the JIT. If the patch is uh, simple like uh, typo fix or documentation change, you can obviously uh, directly send it to the PG hackers after making the patch. On the other hand, if you are working on a feature or some non-trivial uh, patch, it is always advised that you first di discuss the design or desirability of the feature with the hackers before start writing the code. That will avoid rework because many a times uh, discussing with people, you come to know that the idea which we have in mind or you have in mind is not complete. and it needs some more thoughts or the opinions from the others. So th this helps in avoiding mainly the rework part. And doing the necessary homework before proposing the patch to community also helps in giving right and good answers to other peoples, which helps in generating the interest of the other people. So as I told, uh, getting early involvement of the other community members is always considered good because it can help avoiding the rework. While uh, sending the email on the hackers, it is always, uh, it is important to clearly tell what the, pro what problem the proposed patch is trying to solve and how it is solving it. Because the more clear you are about these things, the better the chances somebody will give you a good response and you can see more involvement from other people. If the purpose of the patch is not clear and somebody just attaches some patch to the email and send it to the hackers, probably it won't be, it, it might not get a good response. So while writing the patches, we should consider few things like whether regression tests are updated or added for the new feature, whether it has the documentation updates. If the feature is big, then consider updating the readme or adding the new readme. And also you should explicitly, one should explicitly say whether there is any impact on the performance due to this patch because that helps in uh, you know, uh, getting the feedback if you have any performance impact and you don't know how to avoid it. The another few important things actually which we have seen over the years that are ignored by many developers is like whenever we are adding a new syntax or change the existing syntax, we should also carefully see the PG dump support for it. Or like, does it need to change the PG upgrade for a compatibility across versions? Finally, once you have the patch, then uh, after you post the patch on the hackers, we should register, we must register in the next open commit fest so that the patch should not be forgotten. Because what happens is sometimes you immediately don't get many responses from the community members. And it might get lost in the uh, traffic in community. So uh, it is all, but if you register in the commit fest, uh, in the next commit fest, whenever it starts, it will definitely get some attention uh, from the reviewers. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is right. Sorry, I missed this point, uh, uh, Andrew's point. Like right uh, the, now, by registering in the commit fest, there is an important benefit. Like there, we have a CF boat, which automatically tests the patch, which got registered in the commit fest. So your patch will get automatic testing of the regression test, which we have in the uh, Postgres. So this is one of the really good benefit 
uh, again to register your patch. And uh, the other thing is <coughs> like sometimes what happens is that the patch takes longer time to get committed. So in the meantime, your patch gets conflict with other commits that happen in the meanwhile. So this CF boat, if you register it here, CF boat can also tell you like uh, whether your patch now needs a rebase or you need to change something so that it gets applied and it passes all the regression tests. So, yeah, so actually uh, we have a, a whole a set of documentation for how to update about the regression tests. But mainly the things is the regression tests are divided into multiple things like one is core regression tests where you add any new SQL feature or any feature into the backend, you should must try to add the regression test there. Okay. So, and uh, like they, then there are various kind of other kind of uh, regression tests where like for recovery or uh, the PG dump where we add more tests. So, th these are some of the places where we add new regression tests always. So this helps in maintaining the sanctity of the feature. Anything you want to know specific about like, yeah, um, in SQL, some of the tests in SQL and another in Perl. And we use some uh, tap uh, framework to also test it. So these are the two main things ways the regression tests are written. Yeah, well, there, there is a lot of discussion previously also in the community like uh, of including uh, unit test framework. So, yeah. So if you need automatic feedback of the existing test, uh, as we have told, like you regi just register in commit fest and there is a CF boat which tells you, but I think that is a fallback mechanism. We should not try try to rely on that, but the, uh, the idea is basically before posting the patch, you should be uh, very thorough in, you know, uh, testing your patch. It leaves good impression if nobody is at least able to find any bugs in your patch. Yeah. Yes, right, exactly. Many of the cases that is true. Definitely. Yeah, that is one of the example. And other thing is like we should try hard to come up with some test case for our patch so that the, there is a code coverage also. Yeah, it, you are asking, uh, so the, your question is that whenever we are adding a new test which will cover the existing code, so will that be back patched? So I am um, not sure, but I think we normally, the new things are uh, getting added to the head branch only. But of course in the some corner cases where we fix the bug, say we, uh, we have a bug and we fix it and along with that we add some new regression test that anyway gets back patched.
so important coding guidelines actually it's only the basic idea is only by writing lot of code you will come to know the postgres actual coding guidelines it is quite a vast thing but i will still cover some of the important things which we must try to see before uh, sending the patch like the basic rule of thumb is that we should always follow the adjacent code like where say you are uh, adding a new function or some code in heap.c in particular function the best way is to look around the code where you are adding the new code and try to follow that style and then you it is mostly seen in many patches from newcomers that there are extra wide diffs uh, which comes the way you write the code so you can always use git diff minus minus check to see if there is any unrelated white space change in your patch and the other thing which makes the patch readable is how you name the variables of whichever are used in the functions or throughout what your patch the two ways we use is one is camel case and another is underscore stuff so both ways are acceptable and again the idea is that you can see the nearby code whatever convention is used try to follow that and then uh, some of the easy ways to make your code look good is always run pg indent use the four uh, four columns tab spacing in source code formatting and we always uh, prefer or use c style commands rather than c++ we have seen many a times people coming from c++ background they use slash slash so we uh, that is not uh, what we use in this uh, postgres and the another thing is like the comments which you write in your function or code anywhere it should explain the rationale behind your functionality or code it should not say that okay blah blah what the code is doing we should not try to just write that in english it should explain the rationale behind your functionality and then we also have a rule for line limit length to 80 columns uh, that rule is mostly followed but in some cases we don't try to over use it for example for the cases where error strings are too long there we don't try to break them because th those won't look good so normally we have this rule but there are exceptions where we allow it to be uh, greater than 80 characters and one of the important thing is like how to write the multi line comments i work with many uh, newcomers in postgres i always see that whenever they try to write the first line they will start it from there so that is one of the uh, common thing i have noticed in newcomers patches so we should try to see uh, and write the comments in this way like uh, for the multi line comments the next important thing is like all for all the user facing uh, errors logs or warning we use e report the two important things in the, that is one is severity level of the error and the text message for that error there are various other components which gets used in this uh, e report but one of apart from these two another common thing is the sql state or the you can say that as error code we use for each error basically that tries to follow uh, sql specs now something on this severity level of errors there are lot of uh, different level of severity errors the basic thing is from for the severity level error and above we break the execution and return the error to the user whereas for severity levels below than error 
uh, like uh, uh, error and then notice and then log for all those we just give the message to the user but we continue the execution so it is very important whenever you are adding a new error message to your code or to the function you are writing you should see which severity level it falls so normally this is the format uh, for any uh, error like the first is the level of the error in this case it is error then there is a uh, error code and then finally the uh, error message so normally all user facing errors will use e report but we still have another er error reporting mechanism which we use via e log that is also still used at many places in the code and we use it mainly for cannot happen type of uh, things like where a code path cannot reach or something of that sort so these are not uh, the errors in the e log uh, type of thing are not translatable so that's why they are not user facing because they are not user facing any questions till now okay so the next is about the feedback process in the community like the uh, postgres development is organized into uh, various commit fest like we have yearly release and in that one release we have four to five commit fest like uh, last year we had five this year again we are going to have five so the whole development of postgres divides into these five commit fest this is generally the time when most of the patches got reviewed apart from the committers we need a lot of review effort from others now what happens is that many a times i have seen many new developers whenever they join they think that they don't have much useful thing to add to a review and or th their review comments might not be appreciated i think that is not at all true even doing some basic things for the patch which i will share helps a lot in the review for example even if you don't know the c then also you can help in meaningful ways like you can see whether the patch applies whether it has regression test whether it has documentation updates or if the patch has some performance impact then you can test the performance of the scenarios where it can impact or you can even ask the help of other people in the community i have seen many people in the community who are doing the mostly their work is uh, doing the benchmarking of the patches so th that is really a very big contribution towards the overall process so the idea is basically anyone can uh, start looking into it and we should not hesitate to uh, do the reviews because that is the way we one can start doing all these small and little things which actually doesn't need in intricate details of postgres design is very helpful during a commit fest process because if you don't do some senior uh, hacker has to do that same thing so it saves a lot of time from that from for the senior hacker so the overall there is a big benefit for the system so the experienced reviewers can help with getting the design and the code into a shape that can get committed and the another thing is like Uh, for experienced hackers they can check also if the patch follows the coding guidelines if there are any portability issues in the patch or uh, basically does the patch works in the corner cases basically can you make the patch crash in any of the scenarios and then actually for the design perspective you can always see whether the 
patch uh, can work with other modules uh, well or not? Basically, does it, for example, if the patch impacts the other sub modules, but it has not taken care of that. For example, the PG dump stuff I have uh, explained uh, previously that if you are adding a new syntax, but you forgot to update the PG dump or something like this. So th that is one of the things which uh, also matters during the review. So for more things on what to focus up on reviewing the patches, uh, you can always see the reviewing the patches on the wiki page. Uh, we have uh, summarized the steps. Now, these are some of the ways you can improve it uh, yourself. But we also need to see, like we should not do something which get our patch immediately returned or uh, with feedback or rejected. So the main things we have to avoid is to do any unrelated change in the patch. For example, uh, your patch focuses on one area, but you notice something else and you start making changes into that area also. Or there are unrelated white space diffs. And then another thing is like when you are, how reviews also help is that basically you see how the other reviewer is going to review your patch. So do a self review of the patch before sending it to hackers and doing it multiple times helps a lot like uh, making it clean. And when you are sending a patch for uh, which has a performance win, always try to describe the clear performance scenario where it will win and a test case or a script describing the exact performance scenario is really helpful otherwise uh, the patch can be returned. And the patch doesn't have documentation or regression test. And the most important thing is sometimes like while uh, handling the review comments, we handle some of the minor comments, but we forgot to handle the design criticisms uh, given by the senior hackers. So that is one of the important thing we should try to include in our patch uh, when we are sending it for re-review. So uh, basically I'll try to cover fast time is a bit less. So in the commit fest process, basically we have a couple of states, like whenever you upload your patch, it, it will go in the need review state. And which means that the others uh, as a reviewer, you can add to such patches. And don't hesitate to add yourself where already reviewers are added because bigger patches needs uh, multiple reviewers. And then as soon as you send the comments, make the status of the patch as waiting on author. Once you are done with your review, you can mark it as ready for committer. And you, uh, if everybody agrees to the comments, like at the end of the commit fest, uh, author is not able to complete it, you can send it with return it with feedback. Or if the design is not good, it can be marked as rejected. So another important thing is like I have many times heard this question also, like how much time it will take my patch to get committed? Actually it depends on your patch. Sometimes like you have, one has a simple patch where it just fixes the documentation or you know a typo fix or some direct bug fix that gets many a times committed in one or two days. But whereas there are feature patches or some performance patches which change the entry cases of Postgres, those take long time to get committed. It has to pass through multiple rounds of a review. And the other important thing is like how many other community members get interested in your feature or patch. So it is always important to generate the interest of others in your work. I will share some example how it helps. So next I will uh, share some of the case studies, uh, like how the overall feedback process worked from my personal experience. The first 
the first bigger patch I have developed is for alter system command. Actually, the patch was 800 to 900 lines code with doc changes, but it took us about 14 months to get it committed. And the main thing here was not the code review which took us so much time. It is mainly about the process or the approach which we try to use to implement it which took a long time. And then the other things uh, were like the syntax uh, for this command also uh, took a lot of time for us to finalize. And then we also discussed the vulnerabilities it can bring to the system. And in between, uh, I have changed uh, the company which has small impact, like I could not immediately respond to few things. And the, on, the other, and on the other thing is that as the patch was very heavily discussed and the approach was not being finalized, it prevents reviewers from also start reviewing it. So these are sometimes the things which happen during the patch development in the community process. But eventually it got committed. So the learning is that basically sometimes a patch has to go through lot of passes to get it finally committed. And we should have a patience and uh, never give up attitude to keep working on the community feedback. Like now uh, basically would this patch would have been committed in a shorter time? Maybe, but I don't know. So basically you have to keep the patience to get the things committed which are involved. Similarly, uh, the another patch which took a longer time is like a reduction in wall for update operation. The code was only 300, 400 lines, but the crux again was here like along with reducing the wall, it should not have impacted the performance. So this took us quite some time to discuss among ourselves and then finally Hecky came up with some idea uh, to compare the from the end and the beginning of the tuple for the change bytes and uh, which has no not much performance overhead and it has reduced the wall also. So th that took us uh, quite some time to reach to the state uh, and it got committed finally. So Similar to alter system here also what helps is that it, the patch got revised, keep on getting revised for 19 months and finally it got committed. Now these are some of the small feature which took long time but sometimes features like parallel query or logical replication which are so big, they anyway take multiple release cycle to get committed. Now I'll share one case study where the patch was much bigger, like uh, it was about 200, 2100 lines, but it got committed uh, within seven months. So what worked here is that a lot of community members got involved in this patch. If you can see from the commit message, many members got involved in this uh, patch. And then the preparatory work to make the hash indexes wall log like wall consistency checker or uh, making hash index concurrent has been done separately before this patch. And then uh, the overall uh, approach has uh, been accepted with some uh, small amount of uh, review work. Senior community members like Robert Haas and Jeff James were directly involved in this uh, work to make it uh, to the shape where it get committed. So that also helps a lot. So basically agreement on the design and involvement of multiple members helps the feature to get committed early. And dividing the patch into multiple uh, patches also then again helps. And the most important thing is that how quickly you respond to the comments. Sometimes the comments are given and person hasn't responded for two weeks then it loses the interest of reviewers also sometimes. So the other thing which I have shared in one of the previous slides is like once the patch is committed, it is 
of course the primary responsibility of the committer to maintain it but as a author we should always take care of responding as fast as possible like in this case as soon as a patch got committed tom lane and thomas munro has raised some complaint and i have provided the patch to fix it similarly uh, after working for many months i i found some few other bug in this a new bug and i have again proposed it and it got committed so all this generates the credibility of individual in the community so i think this is all i have to say about uh, the my involvement in postgres and how one can work with community i think time is up but i can take one or two questions if you have any